Back with the wrangle in just a moment, but an update on the voice debate. It continues, of course, to crisscross the country. The Yes campaign is boosted by emotive pleas, such as the one you, we showed you last night from Cathy Freeman, while the No campaign tells us it's all too risky and divisive. Here's Peter Dutton today. I'll run a fair slab so you see it in full context. We shouldn't be surprised, though, because the Prime Minister has set our country up to be divided. He's been warned for months and months and months that he was embarking on a path right up to October 14 and likely beyond, but which is splitting our country in two. We said to the Prime Minister that he should not proceed with this referendum because Australians haven't got the detail that they require to make an informed judgment. And I think that's why Australians are angry at the Prime Minister at the moment, because they're being asked to vote on something that won't be designed until after the election takes place. I mean, what, what sort of Prime Minister says to the Australian public, I'll explain to you what it is you're voting for after you vote. Well, there's a couple of big points to unpack there, and that is it wasn't divisive when the Liberal Party was considering it for all of last year and into this year. The Liberal Party, for all that time, was saying it might support the voice. It kept its options alive, at least publicly, and Dutton wasn't calling it divisive then. The proposal became divisive the day Dutton decided to outright, uh, outright oppose it and campaign, of course, to defeat it. So it's just disingenuous to blame the government for all of the division that the coalition has helped to create. I mean, the bottom line here is that every time you call this thing divisive, you're effectively fueling division. But on that second point, that it's all about the lack of detail, I've explained many times why that's completely overblown. And let me show you how someone else has torpedoed that argument. The person in this case has impeccable Liberal Party credentials. Tony Nutt ran the Liberal Party in New South Wales, in Victoria and federally, but perhaps more importantly, he was for a long period Principal Private Secretary and then Chief of Staff to none other than John Howard as Prime Minister. And Tony Nutt is on the board of the Yes campaign and he supports the Indigenous voice as detailed in the constitutional changes put forward under this referendum. Nutt told a forum last night that the proposal is just, it's practical and is constitutionally safe. He was speaking at a forum put on by the TLMP for Wentworth Allegra Spender and he told them that if this complaint about lack of detail made any sense, it would have actually stopped the Constitution ever coming into being 122 years ago. They did not say, I'm not voting for this Constitution until I see a copy of the Army and Navy Act, Nutt said, of the Australians at the time of Federation. They did not say, I want to know the detail of the Post and Telegraph legislation, Nutt told the forum. It might be that I have a deep concern about the colour of the button of the Victorian Military Establishment Artillery Unit. They didn't go into all of that because they knew if you agreed with the Constitution, you adopted it. That sets the framework and the principles. Then the Parliament breathes life into the institutions because that's what Parliament does. Now, that's a pretty compelling historical and practical explanation by Tony Nutt, demolishing a key no campaign argument from a man respected, of course, like few others, by conservative liberals. And he went on then to have a go at the no campaign fearmongering. When people tell you all this stuff, it's all guff. It's bunkum, said Nutt. It's designed to give messages to people in the wider electorate to persuade them to vote no. That's it. Tony Nutt, that's it. He ought to know he's run Liberal campaigns, federal and state, for three decades or more. And, look, the scares continue. The No campaign are doing their best to make this about treaties still. Treaties are being negotiated as we speak, of course, by state governments and other agreements between Aboriginal groups and governments are being struck all over the country under native title. And all this treaty work will continue with or without the voice. And guess what? As you know, I showed you on Monday night, treaties are supported by none other than one of the leaders of the No campaign, Warren Mundine. The No campaign, as you hear from ad nauseum every night, are against treaties, but their favoured frontman, Mundine, he favours treaties. And the bottom line is this. The point that undermines all of the scare campaigns is the voice cannot deliver treaties. It cannot deliver anything. It is advisory only. The most it can do is express its support for treaties. You know, just like Warren Mundine does. All the scares, all the fear-mongering, it looks more and more desperate every day.